Daily bunker rule. Mr. Power says he wants to see that foreign stuff as soon as it comes in. Don't declare war for a few minutes. According to a high official, it is believed. I foreign correspondent. I could get more news out of Europe looking in the crystal ball. That uh, Stebbin cable has a morsel in it? Stebbins makes me sick. They all make me sick. Europe about to blow up and all I can get out of my foreign staff is a daily guessing game. I want some facts, Mr. Bradley. For instance? Any kind of facts. There must be something going on in Europe beside a nervous breakdown. Uh, why not try sending me over, Mr. Powers? You've written a book on economics or something. The uh, Twilight of Feudalism? Yes, it was very well received. Not by me. I don't want any more economists, sages or oracles bombinating over our cables. I want a reporter. Somebody who doesn't know the difference between a nism and a kangaroo. A good, honest crime reporter. That's what the globe needs. That's what Europe needs. There's a crime hatching on that bedeviled continent. Wait a minute. I've got something that might pass for an idea. Who was that fellow that ran down the payroll robbery last week? Oh, you mean Johnny Jones? He beat up a policeman, didn't he? In the line of duty? Yes, there's some talk at the city desk of firing him. Hmm. Beat up a policeman, eh? Sounds ideal for Europe. Send Mr. Jones up here right away. Mr. Powers wants to see you, Mr. Jones. Oh, he does, huh? You should come to his office right away. What about? Why well, ain't in his confidence. Well, look, you tell him to save his breath. Tell him I've resigned. Well, I'm supposed to bring you there. Okay. I lie open this. Where's Mr. Jones? I told you to send him right up here. Are you Mr. Jones? Yes. Sit down, please. Hmm. You mind a personal question? No. Are you married? No luck. Single, eh? Ever been in Europe? No. What's your opinion of the present European crisis, Mr. Jones? What crisis? I'm referring to the impending war, Mr. Jones. Oh, that? Yeah. Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Powers, I haven't given it much thought. Hmm. You don't keep up with our foreign news, do you, Mr. Jones? Now, look, Mr. Powers, if you're going to fire me, you can scrap the intelligence test. It's perfectly okay with me. I can get a job on any other newspaper in town within an hour. So long. Wait a minute. Nobody fired you. Huh? How would you like to cover the biggest story in the world today? Give me an expense account and I'll cover anything. I'll give you an expense account. Okay, what's the story? 
Europe. Well, I'm afraid I'm not exactly equipped, sir, but I could do some reading up. No, no, no reading up. I like you just as you are, Mr. Jones. What Europe needs is a fresh, unused mind. Foreign correspondent, eh? No, a reporter. I don't want correspondent. I want news. You think you could dig up some news in Europe? I'd be very happy to try, sir. Now, this is what I mean. Mr. Van Meer, when questioned by our article, Mr. Stebbins, refused to open his mouth. 1,200 words, cable tolls, to the fact that the great Van Meer had nothing to say. You know what that kind of stuff is doing? It's driving our readers crazy with frustration. Who's Van Meer? Keynote to the European situation today. Listen, Jones, if Van Meer stays at the helm of his country's affairs for the next three months, it may mean peace in Europe. If we knew what he was thinking, we'd know where Europe stands. In German, eh? No. Holland Strongman, one of the two signers of the Dutch Treaty with Belgians. Now, this is your first assignment. I want you to talk with him, find out what's in that treaty and what he thinks is going to happen. Facts. Van Meer, eh? Right. Anybody else? No. Well, how about Hitler? Don't you think it'd be a good idea to pump him? He must have something on his mind. Yes? Mr. Stephen Fisher to see you, Mr. Powers. Tell him come in. Did you ever hear of Stephen Fisher? I'm afraid he's not on my beat. Well, he is from now on. He's head of the Universal Peace Party and very close to Van Meer. They're both working to prevent Europe going up in flames. Oh. How do you do, Mr. Fisher? Oh, nice of you to come over. Sit no, down. Thank you. Mr. Fisher, Mr. Jones, our new foreign correspondent. I want you to know each other. How do you do, Mr. Jones? Jones. I don't like that name. It's going to handicap you, young man. Now, wait a minute. I've got some sort of a name here. Yes, Haverstock. Huntley Haverstock. Sounds a little more important, don't you think, Mr. Fisher? Oh, yes, yes. Very dashing, too. Mm. It sounds better than Richard Harding Davis. Richard Harding Davis wasn't over there. Oh, we can't use that. That's the name of one of our greatest war correspondents 40 years ago. Well, speak up, young man. You don't mind being Huntley Haverstock, do you? Uh, rose by any name, sir. It's very, very exciting being present at the christening of an American newspaper correspondent. Shouldn't we break a bottle of champagne or something over him? <laughs> you should break one over my head and see if I'm still awake. Humphrey Haverstock. Well, Mr. Haverstock, you'd better get started. You've got a lot to do. Passports, photos, visas. Expenses. Oh, I'll send a note to the cashier. I hope you brought your Sunday articles over. Did I manage three of them. See you in London then, Mr. Haverstock. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, Mr. Powers. Thank you for everything. Except Humphrey Haverstock. Thank <laughs> you.